Hey guys, welcome to David vs. Film. I am David, yo soy David, and tonight I'm going head to head with more Graham Norton, Try Not to Laugh, Part 3. A big hey, hi, and hello to all of you, but to returning viewers, and especially returning subscribers, what's up? As you can tell, we have a little bit of a change of venue today. I am actually on vacation. We are on our first ever cruise out in the Caribbean as we speak. And as you're watching this video, we are still out there, but I have to have my dose of Graham Norton. Clearly, I have become a fan of this show. I wanted to watch part three of the Trying to Laugh series, the compilation videos that he has. I love watching these with you guys. You've left the best comments. You've told me so much information, and I try to get to as many comments as I can, but if I don't get to yours, please know that I have at least seen it, and please keep those coming because they're absolutely my favorite part of these videos. We're gonna jump right in, but before we do, quickly, if you'd like to see other content on this channel, movies, scripted shows, my reaction to those, some with Mark, please check those out, as well as our Patreon for the unedited full version of those and some other really great benefits that you might enjoy. But for now, let us jump into Graham Norton, Try Not to Laugh, part three. And can you look at a cartoon and come up with a voice? Well, like with Happy Feet, <laughs> I, I got to be, like, I played two different characters. Initially three, but then the, the, there were that the one voice sounded too familiar, but when I got to play an Argentinian penguin, <laughs> <laughs> is to play the little machismo penguin, you know, the, the guys, the Argentinian guys are going, what do you, do you know you want it? <laughs> what are you looking at? You know you want it. Look at it. Don't be afraid of it. This is old, Graham Norton, right? Older. I brought you some pebbles. There's some bling, baby. You want some bling? You know you do. <laughs> yes, you're hot, and you know I got a beak that'll make you feel so good. <laughs> and then you have, so like, good. Oh, crazy ones, you know? So good. Listen, talking about animation, uh, we got people in our audience uh, to, to draw cartoons oh, right. of themselves. <laughs> no. Now, I'm sensing, I'm sensing <laughs> self-esteem issues. Well, uh, let's see. Now, oh, no. now, God forbid, when I ask to see this woman in the audience, that she looks like this. Graham <laughs> Norton, you better not put that up on a camera. <laughs> 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 That's voices. I will be on you like shit on Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay, show the picture. This is the lady. <laughs> now, her name is Jane woman. Hayes. Jane Hayes. <laughs> now, let's have a look at Jane in the flesh. Jane? Jane, you're beautiful, Jane. Jane, you're not a, a gay black basketball player. <laughs> Spare a thought for Sally Jenkins and I think her husband. Look at Sally. <laughs> where's Sally, where's Sally, Sally? Sally suffers from paperclip tits. Oh. <laughs> Sally, you look quite buxom. <laughs> With your funny little terrier ears. Look at you. Oh, and, and for some reason you, you've drawn a penis on your own face. <laughs> oh my god. This is clever, though, the drawings. She's done a penis with two tiny balls. <laughs> and what are those? Those are, well, I don't know, there's two upside-down bells. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that your husband, Dave? <laughs> that, is that you? Yeah. yeah. And what, and you, are, you, yeah. are you naked as well? Yeah. What's yeah. that strange line? Yeah, but more importantly, what's peeking out here? <laughs> are those your two balls going, I'm down here? <laughs> And why did you have an accordion for a neck? <laughs> oh, yes! It was the wish the neck. We were drunk. <laughs> I know that. We were drunk. We were drunk. Oh, fair. 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 Yeah. Who else have I got? I've got oh, actually, I'd quite like to see this woman. Uh, Stephanie Jack. Where's Stephanie Jack? Hello, Stephanie Jack. <laughs> now, there's Stephanie Jack in the flesh, and here she is in the cartoon. <laughs> oh, I like that, actually. I'd watch this cartoon. If that was a movie or a show, I'd watch that. This is a great Japanese anime character. <laughs> Mr. Tintelot, come to your house. <laughs> she has big eyes, come to your house with a large breast. Open the door with her nipples. <laughs> Look at those. Hummina, 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 hummina. <laughs> Mr. Bouncing Breast, follow the bouncing breast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's kind of one. Can I have this one? Oh, yes, you can. Oh, my God. <laughs> Been on the road for a while. <laughs> Why were you having the... Was it a deep tissue massage you were having? Uh, I'll say quickly that Robin Williams, I mean, what can you say? He was in the last one, I think. And his energy, 
I mean, obviously is unparalleled and his sense of humor, just so quick, so quick. Yeah, he's he's just R.I.P., one of the best. Where are you going with this, Greg? Oh. Were you, having, you having a Turkish massage or something? I don't know what it has to do with what we're talking about. But, but, uh, it's a funny story, tell it. <clears throat> I had an awful experience having a Turkish massage where Russell Crow. this guy's idea of massage was to like take my le one leg and, and the other arm and try and connect it <laughs> behind my back. No. And I was kind of like, you know, like that. And then I, well, his belly went in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> I've seen that video, so to speak. And you know when you get something weird in your mouth and you're like, if you're eating something, you go like, you send your, your brain sends your tongue to figure out what it is. <laughs> Just thought. It's just like, is that a bone? Figure that out. My tongue goes in to figure it out. My tongue was like, what is that? It's a hairy belly. <laughs> Sounds like you're heading off a newspaper. <laughs> now, uh, Amelia Clark, did you get to yes. chat with everyone backstage? So, uh, uh, just yeah. quickly before we get to Amelia Clark, with that clip, I need to watch more of that episode because so many of you have told me especially with Greg Davies, about the Jackson Pollock, because ever since the first one I think it was, all I can think about, which I know is disgusting, with the bathroom stuff, is the fecal Jackson Pollock. That just paints such an image. And several of you told me that if you've seen the extended episode, or just the episode, that that makes sense because of a story that Ryan Gosling told about Jackson Pollock. So I was kind of hoping that was going to be it, but guess not. I guess I still have to wait for that. Okay, Amelia Clark, one of my favorites. Yeah, kind of. Did you get to talk to him? Yeah, kind of. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia Clark loves Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> Joey. Hi. 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 I'm actually blushing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just think you're wicked. <laughs> it's a game of two halves. <laughs> I, I, I think Dominic's wicked. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. baby yeah. in the Love him, by the way. The favor. Do you watch Good game couch. Thrones, Matt? I watched it the first season, and then I kind of fell out of it, and then I tried to watch it this that's okay, season. That's okay. And I don't know that's what's okay. going on. I can't keep up. I feel There's so lots mad. of stuff going on. There's so yeah. much going on. There is. There really is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. She's so <laughs> sweet. I could lie. I love her. No, 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 no. You've seen the good. You've seen the good bits. You've seen the first season. <laughs> <laughs> is it all down now? No. But this, what is it? It's season six now. It's season six. And it's bigger than ever. Yeah. yeah. Whose laugh is that? <laughs> Seriously, sounds like a chicken has been released into the studio. They can't be. No. Is that a, I, I thought it was going to stop because I thought there was a mechanical fault with something. <laughs> but that's a human being. <laughs> oh, is that man there? All oh, right. Well, I'm glad you're having Don't a nice me. time. <laughs> yeah, poor enough. guy. Uh, I will, I will no, watch. So, I promise. See, I know. No, I know. I do have one slight request from you, though. Uh -oh. um, so, would you would you be able to ask me how I'm doing? Oh my God, oh, I would love it. Yes, do that. Wouldn't you ask the same thing, though, right? Totally makes sense. You, you can say no. Everyone will hate you, but you can say no. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yes. Uh, well, since I, you know, haven't been up up to speed on the show, I will, yes. I will say. Yes. Thank uh, you. Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah. Ooh, the gravelly version. Yeah, it works. Yes, it is. <laughs> There's some scenes where. They that was will good. Play music. I love when stars get starstruck. It's a wide shot, and it's not like a, it, so. It's the closest we get to sort of kind of sort of just sort of going for it in one piece. Um, and they'll play music or something. And my temptation is always just to try to make the Dakota laugh. So sometimes I'll do things like when there's a moment where I'm meant to, you know, orgasm, I'll be like, do 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 do. See, people do that. Wait. <laughs> If they don't, they should. <laughs> it's like a Ryanair flight when a Ryanair flight lands. <laughs> <laughs> I know what a Ryanair is. It's like our Spirit Airlines over there. When do people travel? Okay, you know, let me pause here cars. because I will say, okay, that couch, what was it? Whoopi Goldberg, Keanu, and Jamie Dornan. Who, Jamie Dornan, I know personally, no, not personally, like I know him, I mean, like personally, I know him from Once Upon a Time. I was a huge Once Upon a Time fan. That's where I first fell in love with him. Still have not seen Fifty Shades of Grey, but I've heard he did phenomenal in, in those movies, but never saw those. I only know him from Once uh, Once Upon a Time, which I loved him in. And again, Keanu Reeves, of course, love him and Whoopi. So hilarious. Great, great couches as always, Graham. Dolls in national dress. But you collect 
like animals, like, like living animals. Well, no, I don't collect them. I rescue them. Rescue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so did you rescue anything when you were in Sicily and Tuscany? Not in that one, but in the movie I did right after in Bulgaria, I, I did. Okay. And I had, I had promised my husband I was going to stop because at the time I had ten dogs, five parrots, I had alpacas, horses, cats, and by the way, one without a tail, the other one without a leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they always, they find me, they come to me, these animals, which he doesn't believe me, but they do, and I promise him no more, okay? <laughs> we were up to 30 animals. Jesus! I, I, I swore no more. <laughs> and, and I was there, what? and a little puppy who was abandoned and was going to die, I won't tell you the sad story because it's a comedic show and I'll start crying. <laughs> he came to me and I couldn't help him and I picked him up. And um, his name is Ochoa, after the, the goalie of the soccer team in Mexico. It was a welcome. And I, I took like him and sports. then I was terrified. How am I going to explain this to my husband? I promised, I promised. And um, so I came up with this brilliant idea to pretend that I was having an affair. Mm. <laughs> Then, no, with somebody <laughs> to make him think I was having an affair, and at the end I would say, No, it's not an affair. I picked up a dog, and then he would feel better. <laughs> that I picked up a dog. This is clever. It's good, I, good plan. Good plan. So I left him a message You must call me at this time. We need to talk. It's very yeah. important. <laughs> and I never do that. And this time, it's, okay, what happened? What happened? And I said, Listen, I feel so terrible. I don't know how to say this to you. And I, I know this is not, not going to go down well, and I'm really nervous, and please have mercy on me. Have, have patience, be understanding. It's just, it's been so stressful, and I'm so tired, and I was so lonely here for so many days. And you know, you do crazy things when you're in this state. And he said to me, oh, please don't tell me you picked up another dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's the best. So I, I will say that reminds me of one of my favorite stories that we always tell about an old show called Designing Women. Some of you know. If, if you know, you know. And there was a story in that that Charlene told about cats on the roof. And I'll, I'll, I'll make it quick, but it's basically how you deliver bad news in stages. So similar to what Salma was talking about, where, you know, if you're looking after someone's cat while they're on vacation or they're away or something like that, you know, some the cat died, basically. But you tell them, hey, the cat's on the roof, but don't worry. You know, I've, I've called someone and they're going to come out and get them and they're going to be fine. And then, you know, you, you check up with them and you say, listen, unfortunately, the cat fell off the roof. He's hurt, but we've got our best men on it. We took him to the vet. He's, he thinks he can rescue him. He's going to be okay. I don't want to worry, but I just want to let you know what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. Then you say, well, listen, the vet is in there now. They came out and said it's not looking good, but they're still doing all they can. And then, of course, you know, cat died. So it's a way that you roll out bad news in waves versus just the gut punch of, yeah, your cat died. So it reminds me like of that. You know, I'm cheating on you, but just kidding. We got a dog. What you can do is you can conjure up uh, people's fears. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you, you're afraid Love of like basic things. It, you, I'm so. afraid of like most things. Like anything high risk, I'm terrified of. But, but those are rational things. Okay, irrational is like spiders, because but they actually, um, I become paralyzed when I when I have a spider in my room. Really? Yeah, I like wish I were a lot of afraid than of that, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> now, Mark Ruffalo, were you serious when you told us what your fear is? I mean, it is. It's a good fear. It's, I think it's a founded fear. I think it's a founded love fear. Him. It is. I love Marco Flo. Um, I have a phobia of being chased around with poop on a stick. <laughs> Specific. It's, That's fair. It's, yeah, it's, I wouldn't say. I'd say we've all got that fear. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one that goes, no, I'm up for that. It's, <laughs> it's I don't know him. He's funny, Dr. Tardy. Was this weird it's parenting? <laughs> For some reason, kids thought it was funny to stick a stick in dog poop and chase each other around with it. <laughs> but that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> because of the cleanliness problem of it? Like no, because it's poop. Germs? <laughs> <laughs> it just does poop. Because it's afraid of sticks. <laughs> but now, Jeremy Renner, though, yours is brilliantly specific. And I think we I, without it knowing it, I think we probably all share it. 
We, we may. I don't know. I, I didn't have the, the fear when I was younger because we've all we all go through this. But it's when uh, a little child and I'm the, I'm the oldest of seven kids and I got a lot of little rugrats running around and they, these little roaches start losing their teeth and they get a little wiggly and they like to show me like this little dagger flipping in and out of their mouth and like look Uncle Jeremy want to pull this thing out I'm like I get out of here you're freaking me out <laughs> but don't you think that is really freaky are you it's, it's like I mean, her thumb <laughs> it's just really it's just, again yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It just really yeah. kind of grosses me out. The cutest little thing on the planet starts to do like the creepiest thing on the planet. And I'm like, get out of here. It's like, here, tie the string to my thing, to the doorknob. I'm like, get out of here, creep. <laughs> disgusting animal. Oh, oh, you're terrible. This stage. That's uh, now. Now. <laughs> now I got a lot of little ones running around, flipping their little fake their teeth falling out. Look, we all have this, you know, when you're, you're, you have the dreams, your teeth fall out. I don't yes. know what it means. Anybody know what it means? We get bigger ones. <laughs> no, we have bad dreams. We have, oh, am I the only one that has bad no, dreams? No, weird. A friend, of mine, a friend of mine does have that dream too. Yes, I had just a friend of yours. Night. Yeah, not me. Not what does you? that mean? I think that's I don't something know. to I don't do know. Fear, this of is change. fear of money. I think. I think that's what the teeth. Who has fear out. of money? <laughs> Maybe, I'm, maybe of I'm just afraid of my teeth fucking falling out. <laughs> Fair enough. It's like a like a legit dream. So or nightmare. I will say that, like for me, just I, I want to add that my nightmare, by the way, is the one where something's happening. You're trying to scream, but you have no voice. So what? But I'm always intrigued at this. Like I've I've had the same one with the teeth. I've had the one where I'm suddenly in like a, a production, like a play, and I don't know my lines. Everyone's staring at me, and and it's the pressure. But like. But those are probably my common three that I can think of. But what about if you guys tell me in the comments, like, what is what's your worst nightmare you've ever had? I'm, I'm I love stories like that. <laughs> I feel indulge me. <laughs> Sorry. Now, Josh, what are you afraid? What are you afraid of? Well, I was gonna go with flying, but I think I'll go with um, girls shit. over twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Had to see the whole show to get the context of that joke. I don't follow that. But they seem to. You're not going to believe what he said to me. <laughs> he was bang on the money. <laughs> bang on the money. Oh, He's a very oh, perceptive man. <laughs> oh. It was the Dora poem. <laughs> Don't try and justify it. <laughs> Do you know what? I've always hated the Hulk. He's shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Good, very angry. good. Yeah, you would like me when I'm angry, Ruffalo. That's what I'm <laughs> I, my son said that to me the other day when he was mad at me. <laughs> oh, no. What, that you wouldn't like him? Anymore? I always hated the Hulk. I think he's shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is the hold that the Spice Girls have over you? Is this real? Yes, <gasps> it's real. Another and, and I just feel like mine. I've been talking more about the Spice Girls on this press tour than I have about the movie. That's because you wept. You wept I in did Australia. Weep. I know, I wept. Did you really weep? I really did. But now, which one was talking to you? Melby. And was she really talking to you or was it a message? No, it was a video message on an iPad. And that made you cry? Yes! <laughs> what, were you jet lagged? Yes! Oh. But I also, you don't under, I mean, Another star I, you struck star. understand because uh, we're in the UK. Yeah. I was, I was a fiend. I was obsessed with the Spice Girls. And they taught me about girl power. Mm. And I love them. I think they're fantastic. What's and this, I'm- What's the song? There's so many, Jamie. There's so many. It's true. No. Spice up your life. Every boy and every girl. Spice up your life. No. Hey. There's if so you want to be my and lover. They're so fantastic. And today on the radio, um, Mel C talked to me over Skype. Oh, wow. Oh. So it's really very exciting. Okay, now, who would you say is your favorite Spice Girl? Emma Bunton, Baby Spice. She's your favorite. Okay. She's my favorite. Who's next? <laughs> Don't do that. Just a question. All of the other four. <laughs> so, Diplomatic. Emma well, Emma Bunton was the one that I had blonde hair and bangs, and my name obviously is now Emma. My name was Emily, but it was taken 
when I became an actor. Um, and so <laughs> now it's Emma. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I love. So get me this. So, so you, one gave you a video message and one talked to you on Skype. Yes. But are you telling me you've never met are you a Spice do, Girl? Are you going to do oh, something? Shit. Have you never met a Spice Girl? Are you going to do something really? Have you never met a Spice Girl? I'm, wait, hold on. I have to mention. I'll freak out over this, actually, if they all come out have there. You've never met a Spice Girl. Not in the flesh. Okay. Now, as Don't. you know, as you know, as you know, Emma, it is very rare, it is very rare for more than one Spice Girl <gasps> to appear together. She looks panicked. For look at her looking around. At all. So, they're not here. Oh, oh fucking Graham Norton. Fucking Graham Norton. Oh, my God. And in on that. I'd be so mad. Oh, my God. But that was good. I, again, I have to say, not as like a broken record, but like I... Every single one of these, I am just shocked at the guests he's gotten. Not because I deserve them, but just because it's so unusual for me to see such megawatt talent in one room. And one, speaking of Spice Girls, like where he was alluding to the fact that they might be coming out, and then obviously it was a joke. But you know, but the fact that he has all this talent in so many of the episodes, and I just watched the one because I'm still trying to figure out how to watch this show. Uh, live where I am because I have Hulu for my TV and it doesn't have BBC America so I'm going to try to find it but anyway long story short I saw a video where it was clips of the most recent one with it was Cher, Julia Roberts and someone else I can't remember off the top of my head right now but yeah but they both were on there and I just remember thinking Cher, Julia Roberts it's craziness right but that's Graham Norton so what that means to me is that there are so many amazing clips to watch and i'm enjoying this trying to laugh series so far uh so we're on three now this is three then I'm, i i think there's like maybe six i want to say something like that but after that you guys have been so great letting me know you know look for this episode look for that episode look for this person look for that person as well as uh what i lie to you that becomes one of the biggest things i've heard you guys recommend greg davies you know that you guys told me to check out uh i i express my sincere and deep love for olivia coleman um and many of you told me to check out things she's been in you asked me if i would seen broad church which i have and that actually I saw because i watched the american version which i know how you guys feel about those and you're probably right on that one because i believe though david tennant if memory serves was in that one and it was called something like grace point or saving grace or something like that but it was it was the americanized version of broad church which i then watched and loved 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 broad church um and and so anyway yeah love all of these actors as well and i'm so glad you guys uh watched this along with me today i thank you for your understanding if there's any kind of glitches um or if it looks a little different given the situation that I'm out of my normal area and I brought this dog and pony show on, on the road or technically, I guess, on the water. Uh, I want to do one more while I'm out of town and I am working on Game of Thrones right now. Uh, I didn't get a chance to finish that, as I said in my, my community post. I tried so hard, but I just ran out of time. I know it sucks because those are the last two episodes of season four, but I really am working on getting those edited to get them turned around. But I hope you enjoyed this. In the meantime, again, please let me know your thoughts on this episode, other Graham Norton episodes. Keep referring those things for me to check out because that is absolutely my favorite part. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. If you found vid if you found value in this video, please give it a like because that really helps me out and it's free to you as well as to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. But in the meantime, I hope that you have a great rest of the day slash night and I will see you in the next video. Bye. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble